thus far we've been creating apps that when we stop the app, any changes we've, that we have made to that, to that app or any data that we've added to it is lost. We now want to look at some ways that we can save our data. And we're going to start with core data. Core data is internal to our project. It's really ideal for saving things like settings or small amount of data. If we were to have larger amounts of data, we'd probably want to use an external text file or a database um, that would be external that we would write data to and read data from. I'm going to start a new app. I'm going to call this one 11A Core Data Demo. And we want to make sure we're checking this box that says Core Data. That will allow us to set up the uh, Core Data Framework. I'm going to click Next. Save it. And here's our project. So we're going to go into the storyboard. We'll create our interface here first. I want a label. In the interest of time, I have zoomed ahead here. I've created my storyboard. Um, I've created a label named Core Data Demo 1, or that's the text of it. I then created a view of that I just colored black. And I set up constraints on all of these so that the view is basically 10 pixels from the leading edge and from the trailing edge and um, 10 pixels from the, the label. Inside that view then is a horizontal stack view. And that horizontal stack view I've set up to have distribution of equal spacing. Inside that stack view then are seven buttons that are each a different background color. These are all constrained to be the same size and have the same aspect ratio of one to one. And that lays them out nicely then within the stack view. Then I have a text view. I have a label at the bottom that's gonna be for our feedback and then a button and the text is simply set to save settings. So that's our interface. What we want to have happen is when the user clicks one of these buttons, it's going to set the background of our entire uh, screen to that color. I'm going to hide the navigation panel on the left. Let's bring up our assistant editor so we can see both our storyboard and our uh, view controller Swift file. So I need to create an outlet for the uh, view itself. So I'm just going to control drag. And I'm going to call this BG view for background view. I also want an outlet for the text view. I'm going to call it message text view. And I want an outlet for my label at the very bottom. And we'll call that feedback label. And then I'm going to create an action for the red button. And I'm going to have all the other buttons share this same action. So I'm going to name it uh, color back, color BG for color background. And we'll just hit the button. Color BG button. So do buttons. I want to make this an action. And it will use a UI button for the type. My code is going to be to set the background color of the BG view. To sender that background color. So whatever color the button is that the user clicks on, that's the color it will set for our background. Let's just try that. I'm going to test this in an iPhone 8 simulator. And I just noticed a problem. I think when I dragged my view to create the outlet, I actually was dragging inside the text view. So we're going to fix that. And then get rid of that. Outlet. I didn't notice it said UI text view. I wasn't paying close enough attention, I suppose. 
Um, but let's also select that text view and make sure that our connection is also removed for that BG view. And then we'll come down here and just make sure we drag this. Okay, so now it's showing object view controller and I want this to be the BG view and we'll connect. So let's try this again. So now each of the buttons colors the background view. The problem is though, if I close my simulator and then I start it again, the last one I checked was purple, but it goes back to white. It's not saving any of those uh, settings that we're making. So that's where the, the core data is gonna come into play. I'm going to bring up the navigation panel again and in the navigation hierarchy I got this XC data model ID and this is where we set up our data view. So we're first going to create an entity. So I'm going to add an entity. Entity is basically just a table. So I've added an entity. We're just going to call it settings. And then I can add fields to that entity. So I'm going to add an attribute called BG color. And I don't have a color option for data type. So I'm going to use it as a string. And then we'll create a method to save the color as a string and another method to read the string and save it back out as a color. We have that message box. I also want to be able to save a message. So I'm going to add another item. This will be message and it too will be a string. Okay, we're gonna keep it very simple. That's our, that's our core data. Let's go back to our view controller. So in order to use core data or to program it, I need to add import core data, using the core data framework. Then we're gonna add a App delegate variable, which is of type app delegate. And this is going to equal an app delegate. In order to use data, we need to give it a context. The context here is going to be an NS managed object context. It's going to equal NS managed object context. And it requires a concurrency type, which will be dot main Q. Concurrency type. And I see I misspelled concurrency, it's bringing a little error there. That goes away. We've got another variable. We're going to call it saved background color. It will be of type string. And we'll set it initially equal to um, a null string, quote, quote. We've declared our app delegate in context, but we need to validate those in the view did load. So in our view did load, we will set app delegate equal to UI application. Dot shared dot delegate and that's going to be as app delegate and then our context is going to be equal to that app delegate dot persistent container Dot view context. That then will allow us to use the 
core data. Next, I'm going to create two methods, one to convert the color to a string uh, with its RGBA values, red, green, blue, alpha values, and then another one to convert that string with the R RGBA values back to a color. So I'm going to create some methods down here at the bottom. We're going to create a function called color to RGBA. We're going to have an argument of my color, which is of type UI color. Then we're going to return a string value. And I noticed that I misspelled UI color. That'll fix that error. In the interest of time, I'm going to paste some code in that I've written previously. And in this code, I'm setting up some variables for the red, green, blue, alpha SCG floats. Those are the data types for red, green, blue, alpha for the UI color. I'm going to create a, uh, a string called my color string. That's going to be the string we're going to return. And then UI color has a method built in called get red. It's kind of a misnamed method because it not only gets the red, it also gets the green, blue, and alpha values. And then I'm simply taking those and converting those to integers in these four lines. I want to store them as integers. So as float, they have a value between 0 and 1. As integer, they would have a value between 0 and 255, which would be our 8 bits for each color. My string then is going to be interpolated from those values being separated by comma. So I'll have the red value, comma, green, comma, blue, comma, alpha. And that's what we're going to return. And then I did do a return failure if this didn't work. Um, and we could handle that return failure in our calling statement. Next, I want to create another function to go the opposite direction. So this one we're going to call RGBA to color. I'm going to pass it a string, which is of color value. And then we're going to return a UI color. And again, in the interest of time, I'm simply going to paste some code that I've already written. OK, in this method, we're taking the string named color. And I'm using the split method of a string uh, variable and looking for the separator of a comma. And that will separate the four values into an array called XYZ. Then I'm going to have RGBA as optional integers that will get those values from those four elements and convert them to integers. Remember, they are strings, so we need to convert them to integers. Having done that, I can then create a new color using the init for UI color class from passing it to the red, green, blue, alpha values as CG floats. However, since these are integers and optional integers at that, I need to convert them to a float, divide by 255.0, and convert that to a CG float. And I do that for all four. And then I can return my new color, which is of type UI color. Let's check to see if our method works. I'm going to scroll back up to where we're changing the color. I'm going to use that feedback label. This would probably not be part of a design that I would necessarily distribute, but for testing, it's a great way to look at some values. So feedback label dot text equals color to RGBA. We have our argument of my color, and I'm going to pass it the BG view dot background color. In background color, I need to unwrap that. Let's test it again. And so now I want to click the red button. We can see the values for that red. This is not a pure red. So 257, 38, minus 5, and 255. Well, it should really be 0 and then minus, 50, then minus 5. So I'm going to go back to my code and 
if these are negative value of seven to zero. So I'm just going to add an if statement here that if I red is less than zero, then we'll set I red equal to zero. And I'm going to copy that statement and paste it. And just change the reds to green, blue, and alpha. And I'm going to test one more time. I need to set these to be variables rather than constants. And we test one more time. And there we now have zero rather than a minus five. That noise you're in the background is my Rottweiler saying she needs to go out or she wants something to eat. So I'm going to pause here and come back. Next, we're going to code our save settings button to save the color and whatever message we put into the text view uh, to our core data. So I'm going to create an action for that button. I'm going to call it save settings button. It's going to be an action. Type UI button and we'll connect. I apologize for the noise in the background. This is now my Rottweiler sitting at my feet with a very large uh, antler that she is chewing on. And again, in the interest of time, I'm going to I'm going to uh, paste the code in here. So here in the code, I'm going to set a variable called my entity, which is going to relate relate back to our our entity with settings that was our table in essence that we created and then a variable called my settings which is going to be the ns manage object tied to my entity and inserted into our context we're going to save our background data by saying my settings dot set value and i specify the value that i want to set in this case i'm going to set my colored rgba um, of that background that we tested in our feedback label and I tell which key I'm setting it for. So I'm setting it for the key named background color. That's the attribute we're setting. I'm going to do the same thing for the message. I'm going to set my settings.setValue to the text of our message text view. And the key there is message. Then we have to actually save it. And we do that by trying a context.save. And if that worked, feedback label is going to say data saved. If it didn't work, we'll put failed saving into that feedback label. So the next step is once we've saved it, we need to be able to restore it when we do our view did load. So I'm going to come back up to the view did load. And again, I'm going to copy in some code and then I'll explain the code. So here then is the code for our in our view did load. We're going to create a request variable. And we're going to use NS fetch request. This is what we call a generic. And I can see it's a generic by the less than greater than symbols. And it can take different types. In this case, the type is going to be an NS fetch request result. And we're going to pull it from settings. So we're going to get all the records in settings. Then we're going to create a variable called let results. And we're going to actually fetch that request in the context. Our feedback label then is going to say core data settings records. And I want to see how many results there are. And I'll show you why I'm doing that in a minute. Um, We'll want to fix a problem that occurs with this as a result of looking at this information that there's multiple records being saved each time. Actually, each time we click the button, we're saving a record. We really only need one record. And so if, if the results.count is greater than zero, meaning there's data in our entity, then for each one of those records, we're going to set a, we're going to retrieve the value from the key bg color as a string which is a string optional do the same thing 
And then if it's not nil, we're going to set the background view, we're going to set the background color of the background view by passing that value to our function that we wrote earlier of RGB to color. That will return a color value as an optional. And then we'll do the same thing with message. We're going to retrieve the string from the entity uh, named settings for the key of message, put that into my message, and if that's not nil, then we're going to set the text of message text view to my message. If this doesn't work, we're doing a, a do catch here, a do try catch. So if there's an error, then we will get in our feedback label failed retrieving the data. So let's try this. So I'm going to save the purple color. And let's put in a message here of welcome to SMCC. I'm going to save the settings. And I see it down here in the feedback label. I get data saved, saying that it worked. Well, let's see if it really did work. I'm going to close my simulator. And we're going to come back and open it again. And if it worked, and if we're restoring everything, we should get purple background and a message that says, welcome to SMCC. And that's exactly what we get. Now you notice it says down here, we've got core data settings records of one. I'm just going to create a few more settings, say a few more settings. So we've gone through this a bunch of times. I'm going to save the settings. Uh, again, let's just change this message. We'll say Swift Rocks. Save that setting. And now I'm going to again close our application, come back and reopen it. And notice I get, I've got seven core data settings. The only one I really need is the last one. So we're going to add a little bit of code to basically delete all the old records before we save our new settings. Let's go back to our code. So I'm going to come down to the code. And again, I'm going to paste in a method I wrote earlier. And this is a function I call remove old records. Again, I'm going to retrieve all the records that are part of the settings entity. Then I'm going to do a do try and let the results equal that fetch request. If the results are greater than zero, for every result in results as an NS managed object, remember each record is an NS managed object, I'm going to take that managed object and I'm going to delete it. That will delete all the records. Then I'm going to call this when we save our records. But I'm going to do it before we do anything in our save settings. We will do remove old records. Now, in some cases, if you're saving data, uh, maybe for a to-do list, something like that, you wouldn't necessarily want to remove those records. This would be if you're really just looking at what are the most recent settings values. OK, I'm going to test this again. Now I'm going to create a new color. We'll change our message. The popular hello world. I'm going to save those settings. You may have noticed we got seven records before. And I'm going to close and come back. And only have one, one record. Should I save again? Make some changes to the message. I'm going to save those settings. So I'm going to close my app, open it again. And now I've got this, the settings. And again, it just says only one record. So everything seems to be working. That is how we can use core data to store data, and particularly in this case, storing uh, user settings.